Okay. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. So this lecture is the continuation of the lecture from last week, which is planning healthy menu. So in this lecture, we will take a look at the healthy recipe. So just as a definition, meal is the regular occasion okay, throughout the day when you take a large amount of food. Okay? And note that this list are dynamic. Okay? At certain, uh, certain occasion, you will have different courses, for example, appetizer, soup, salad, main course, and dessert. Uh, you probably know more about this one as we are food service student. And note that this list are dynamic. Okay? For example, salad here, the definition is it often referred to a cooked vegetable, but in certain countries or region, it can mean the raw salad, the raw vegetable without cooking. Okay, for example, ulam and so on. Okay. And as we learned from last week, the diet planning principle, diet planning principle consisted of several different principles. Okay. For example, the first one, it must be adequate, providing sufficient energy. Second, balance, okay, means that you must take the food depending on your body status. Okay, for example, if you are male, you need to take more than female. The third one is energy control to make sure that you won't take more than what, what you needed and it may cause the increase in weight. Next, nutrient density. The more nutrient dense the food is, the better it is. Okay, for example, if you take uh, Pepsi or soft drink, we can call that as zero calories, means that it contains calories without any other nutrient, just sugar. But if you take a glass of milk, we call that as nutrient dense meal because it contains other nutrient that is needed by the body. Next, moderation. You must take every nutrient in moderation as suggested by the food pyramid. And the last one is variety because when you take different meals under the same food pyramid, try to diverse your intake because different meals under the same food category can contribute to different nutrients. Okay. Always remember to switch to healthier choices when you make your food choices. For example, if you are eating, you are taking roti canai as your breakfast, you can try change them to tosai. Tosai contains much less calories and also fat compared to roti canai. Okay, and this is uh, applicable to other food as well. For example, if you are uh, you like to eat nasi lemak, you can try to call, to switch them to nasi kerabu because they contain almost less calories than nasi lemak and also almost 80% less fat compared to nasi lemak. Okay, you can take a look at the alternative here for further information. Okay. So, currently, Malaysians are eating too much or too little of this thing. Okay, this is supposed to be a class activity, but we can take a look one by one. For example, solid fat. Uh, in my opinion, we take too much solid fat, means that the saturated fat in form of the fried food. Second, sodium in the processing food, we probably take too much as well. Added sugar, okay, especially in the bakery stuff, okay, uh, the food that we buy from outside and so on. Refined grains means that the grains that is being extensively processed, okay, for example, the white bread and so on. So we take more as well. But uh, my guess is we take very low amount of vegetable. Okay, one is probably because the taste is not very good, and the second one is price of vegetable is very high nowadays, and it is the same for fruits as well. The next one is fat-free milk. Uh, previously, it is recommended to take skim milk or fat-free milk because the whole milk contains lots of calories. But recent research shows that whole milk can be very beneficial for you as well. So this is a very dynamic research. Then fish. Uh, in my opinion, we take very less fish because Malaysians prefer to eat meat compared to fish. Uh, one of the reasons is of course the price and also probably the method of cooking of fish is much complicated than meat. Next, we tend to take a lot of rice as well. So rice is considered as refined grains because it has been bleached, the bran and the germ has been removed. So it contains a lot of calories in form of carbohydrate. 
then we take very less ulama or raw vegetable okay because probably the same as reasoning for the vegetable the taste is not that good and also it can be quite expensive then we take a lot of white bread okay the same as refined refined grains and finally uh, we also take a lot of condensed milk okay usually in the form of dessert or also beverages for example tetari and so on so how to manage your body weight okay so this is just a straightforward suggestion okay for example the first one is to avoid sugar sweetened beverages or soft drink that contains a lot of sugar then you need to monitor your food intake so always remember in your mind that you we need to reduce the portion of carbohydrate and increase the portion of vegetable fruits and whole grains then you can try to prepare serve and eat smaller food portion one of the trick is to use a smaller plate okay so unconsciously you will put a smaller amount of food portion then when you eat out you can try all the small option or share a meal or check the calories before you eat if you learn nutrition you can always have the your estimation of the calories in your mind before you eat anything from outside then you need to limit the screen time especially nowadays we always use the mobile phone internet uh, laptop tv and so on because screen time can be considered as sedentary lifestyle then you try to be physically active it doesn't have to be very intense physical activity it can be done by simply park your car a little bit far or walk to the classes or maybe move around once in a while for example every 30 minutes and so on then eat nutrient dense breakfast Okay, to start your day because when you start your day during breakfast that's the best time for the body to absorb all the nutrients from the meal that you eat so how to lose weight okay so this is uh, several recommendations as well for example the first one is intermittent fasting because fasting has been shown to uh, increase the repair of the body in the form of activating the cell inside the body to to eat and repair the damaged cells second high protein diet okay because high protein diet can lead to bigger satiety means that you are not hungry anymore then sufficient sleep because research has shown that if you sleep well it can regulate the hungry hormone better compared to the insufficient sleep then eat healthy fats okay for example when you fry your food try to use the healthy oils for example coconut olive oil uh, oil from nuts and seeds okay compared to the oil that you get from the animal then drink healthy beverages okay for example you avoid soft drink juices and alcohol okay so fruit juice also although fruit itself is healthy but when you convert them to fruit juices you blend them you already destroy most of the fiber and it can be very high in calories okay almost the same as soft drink then fill up on fiber means you need to eat more vegetable and fruits reduce intake of refined carbohydrate increase your cardio physical activities sometimes probably you can drink coffee okay, uh, without sugar so that you can increase the metabolism of the body you can perform high intensity interval training which can take about 10 minutes of your time every day okay, compared to the longer period of the physical exercise which needs a big motivation okay, by you and then add probiotics in your diet because good bacteria has been shown to regulate your mind also regulate uh, take care of your stomach and so on eh? and then lastly to increase your iron intake because if you increase your iron intake more calories can be burned because oxygen can be delivered throughout the body so in preparing the meals you can try to reduce the fat okay for example you can choose lower fat or reduced fat dairy products or go for dairy alternative you can grill 
bake, poach, or steam food rather than frying or roasting. You can measure oil with teaspoon to control the amount of you of the oil that you use. You can use the oil spray to reduce the oil intake during the cooking, and also you can trim the visible visible fat and take the skin off meat and poultry. Okay, some cooking methods can reduce several key nutrients. Okay, the following nutrients are often reduced during cooking. For example, water soluble vitamins. Okay, this one are the vitamins that are most likely to be reduced during cooking compared to fat soluble vitamins. Okay, the A, D, E, K. And some minerals can be reduced by cooking as well. For example, potassium, magnesium, sodium, and calcium. These are all important minerals for the growth of the body. Okay, water-based cooking, okay, for example, poaching, simmering, boiling, and steaming usually reduce the vitamin C content okay, more than other cooking methods because vitamin C can dissolve in water. So broccoli, spinach, and lettuce may lose up to 50% or more of their vitamin C through leaching and high temperature. Up to 60% of thymine, which is vitamin B, Niacin, vitamin B complex as well, and other B, B vitamins may be lost when meat is simmered and its juices run off. So when the soup or the juice leach off from the food, most of the B complex vitamin can lost in the juice as well. However, the liquid containing this juice is, if we consume this juice, 100% of the minerals and 70 to 90% of B vitamins are retained okay, in the juice. Boiling fish was shown to preserve omega-3 fatty acid content significantly more than frying or microwaving. Steaming is one of the best cooking methods for preserving nutrients, including water-soluble vitamins, which are sensitive to heat and water. Because steam, there will be no juices dripping off and most of the vitamin will stay in the food. In grilling, the heat source comes from below, but when boiling, it comes from above, for example, in the oven. Grilling is one of the most popular cooking methods because of the flavor it gives to the food. Okay, because we can taste the um, taste the grill. Okay, we can taste the smoke that is coming from the fire. Yeah, up to 40% of the B vitamins and minerals may be lost during grilling or broiling when the nutrient-rich juice drips from the meat. However, there are also concerns about the formation of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are potentially cancer-causing cancer substances that form when meat is grilled and fat drip onto a hot surface. But studies found that PAH can be decreased by 41 to 18 percent if drippings are removed and smoke is minimized. Okay, microwaving is an easy, convenient, and safe method of cooking uh, because it only consisted of short cooking times and reduced exposure to heat to preserve the nutrients in the microwave foods. Studies have found that microwaving is the best method for retaining hot antioxidant activity of garlic and mushroom. Uh, up to 20 to 30 percent of the vitamin C in green vegetable is lost during microwaving okay, compared to other cooking method which utilize the water. So cook vegetable it, uh, how to maximize the nutrient retention during cooking. Okay, the first one is to cook the vegetable in small amount of water to reduce the loss in vitamin C and B vitamins. 